Hello there. This is Mr. Mark with another exciting episode of Physics TV. In this video, we are studying Kirchhoff's rules, which are basically two simple rules to help us analyze circuits. These rules actually come from the conservation laws that we already know, and so conceptually they won't be anything new, it's just applying them to circuits. The first of Kirchhoff's rule is, rules is referred to as the junction rule which basically states that the current that enters a junction must equal the current leaving the junction. This is basically a statement of conservation of charge. If some charges go in one point, it should stand to reason that they should go out the same point, and that the same amount of charges that went in should equal the amount of charges that go out. Um, it would be kind of like pouring water down a pipe only to have some disappear if this law wasn't true. So consider two resistors. Suppose we know that one resistor has a current of 2 amperes flowing through it. By the junction rule, we know that the second um, resistor has a current of 2 amperes flowing through it. So they have to have the same current because they are in line with each other. There's no junctions for the current to go out of and so whatever amperes goes through the first one has to go through the second one. Consider a set of resistors like this. Suppose that 4 amperes goes through that resistor and that 3 amperes go through that resistor. Well since 4 amperes enter the junction right here, then 4 amperes have to leave that junction meaning the bottom resistor would have a current of 1 ampere running through it. So, let's do a couple of simple examples. Um, the question here is for each of these circuits, what is the reading on each ammeter that we draw? So consider a simple circuit like this one. 0.2 amperes going through the resistor on the left. That means that the ammeter has to read 0.2 amperes. The fact there's another resistor to the right doesn't affect that reading. 0.2 amperes enters the resistor, and so 0.2 amperes has to enter the ammeter. Suppose we had something like this. 1 ampere of current plus 2 amperes of current would give me 3 amperes of current. Let's look at a slightly more complicated example. Suppose that the resistor on the right has 5 amperes of current, the resistor on the bottom has 1 amperes of current. Well, in order to add something to 1 to get 5, that current has to be 4 amperes. Suppose we had this complicated circuit where we had 3 resistors whose currents all come together like this. 3 amperes plus 3 amperes plus 3 amperes would be 9 amperes. Let's suppose we took a very similar circuit, but we added a branch before we got to the ammeter, and that we measured 2 amperes of current are going through that bottom resistor. The reading on the ammeter would now be 7. Originally there were 9 amperes of current, 2 are missing because they had another junction they could leave through, and so 7 are left over. At that point right there, there's still 9 amperes of current it's before the current has split at that junction. The second of Kirchhoff's rules is referred to as the loop rule. The loop rule states that the net change in voltage around a closed loop must be zero. Remember that voltage is a uh, measurement of energy, basically energy per charge, and so this is a statement of conservation of energy. And so the loop rule is simply a consequence of the fact that those charges won't gain or lose energy other than the things that cause a voltage change. And so energy's got to be conserved, and the loop rule has to be true. Charges gain energy whenever they move through a battery. So the delta V is positive. Charges lose energy whenever they move through a resistor. 
Remember that resistors convert that energy to thermal energy. They get hot, in other words. So delta V moving through a resistor is negative. So suppose we have this circuit like this. And I know that the battery has a voltage of 20 volts. Correctly, we should label that as delta V equals 20 volts. What that means is that every coulomb of charge that comes through the battery will gain one joule of energy from the battery. Excuse me, that should be 20 joules of energy. Not one. And so the charges move through each of those four resistors. Let's suppose that the voltage drop across this resistor was 5 volts. What that means is that each coulomb of charge that passes through that resistor loses 5 joules of energy, let's get lost to thermal energy again, as it moves through the resistor. Suppose that we knew that the other two resistors there at the bottom had voltage drops of negative 6 volts and negative 7 volts. Question is, what's, what is the voltage drop on the last resistor? Well, for the net cycle, for the net um, loop, the net delta V has to be 0. And so if it gains 20, then as we go through each of those resistors, we have to end up losing 20 total. And so for that last one, delta V has to be negative 2. So 20 minus 2 minus 7 minus 6 minus 5 would be 0. So to kind of understand what the loop rule is all about, imagine that you have a charge that begins inside the battery. So in other words, it begins right there. As it goes through the battery, the battery gives it 20 joules of energy per each coulomb of charge. Doesn't matter how many charges there are, we just know that each coulomb will get 20 joules. Now each time it goes through a resistor, it's going to lose some energy to thermal energy. So through the first one, it'll lose 2 joules per coulomb. Through the second one, it'll lose 7 to the next one it'll lose 6, to the last one it'll lose 5. So the net energy lost for the loop is 20 joules per coulomb. So by the time we get back to the other side of the battery, like right here, all that energy that we gained from the battery has been lost to thermal energy moving through the resistors. So, for the entire loop, the net delta V is zero. So, let's look at some more examples. The question this time is, what is the reading on each voltmeter in the circuit? So, let's start with a relatively simple circuit like this one. 12 volt battery and one resistor whose voltage drop is negative 4 volts. Well, in order for the net to be zero going through the loop, the voltmeter would have to be reading negative 8 volts. We took one that's a little bit more complicated. Again, a 12 volt battery, two unknown resistors, but that top resistor is known to be negative 3 volts voltage drop. Well, in order for one loop containing the first resistor to add up to a net delta V of 0, that first resistor has to have a voltage drop of negative 9. 12 minus 9 minus 3 is 0. The other voltmeter is going to read the same as the first known resistor's voltage, which is negative 3 volts. If you consider the two possible loops, first that looks like this. Delta V for that loop would be 12 minus 9 minus 3, which is 0. And then the second loop, which would look like that, would also have to equal 0. And so it would have to be 12 minus 9 minus 3 for that loop as well. So in general, 
when two resistors are in parallel, like these two are, then they're going to have the same voltage because of the loop rule. Let's look at a third example. If we consider one path that looks like this, then our net voltage needs to be 20 minus 8 minus 4 plus the unknown, and that has to add up to 0. Then solving for our unknown would give us negative 8. So 20 minus 8 minus 4 minus 8 would equal to 0. Going through the second path, that would look like that. We would have just the one resistor after the first one, and so our net voltage would be 20 minus 8 plus the unknown equals 0. And so in this case, our unknown has to be negative 12 volts. Let's look at another example. We're going to use all three of our big circuit rules. We have a circuit that looks like this with three resistors. And here are the things that we know. I know the voltage of the battery, 10 volts. I know one resistor has a, a value of 2 ohms. I know the second resistor has a value of 4 ohms. I know the current through that first resistor is 0.5 amperes. And we want to know all of these things. We're kind of taking these things one step at a time and it's not necessary to go in this order, but the first thing that I would do is realize that the junction rule applies since each of these resistors is part of the same loop of um, current. So each of those resistors has to have the same current running through it. And so both of those would have a current of 0.5 amperes. Since I know two of the three values for two of the resistors, I can use Ohm's law to figure out what the voltage is. Voltage is equal to current times resistance. So for this resistor, the voltage would be 2 volts. Don't forget to make it negative, since it's losing the charges are losing energy as they go through. And doing the same calculation down there at the bottom, you would get negative 1 volt for the voltage drop on the first resistor. Now that I know all those voltages, I can use the loop rule to solve for the unknown voltage. I know that the net voltage change for the loop has to be 0. And so solving for that delta V, I would get negative 7 volts. Finally, I've got one unknown left, and I can use Ohm's law to figure out, figure out what that missing resistance is. So since R is V over I, dividing the 7 volts by 0.5 amperes would give me a value of 14 ohms. One thing to note here, that the current is the same for all of them, but it took the most energy to move through the 14 ohm resistor. Notice that the bigger R got, the bigger the V got. That's an indication that it's more difficult for the charges to move through those bigger resistors, and so they expend more energy in doing so. So that concludes our lesson on Kirchhoff's laws. Don't forget about Ohm's law. It's still very, very important. And all three of these rules are going to be critical to understanding and analyzing circuits like we want to be able to do.